Hey guys, it's Danny. Today is, well, it's almost the 1st of August, and it's time to take a look at the orchids which were in full bloom in the month of July. So today we're not gonna see repeats from previous months, even though they might still be in bloom, and we're not gonna see orchids which are not totally fully in bloom or very close to it. And this is because, well, every month we are holding an orchid popularity contest. So you guys can check the description down below, find the link where you can vote for your favorite orchid this month. And at the end of the year, we're gonna declare the most popular orchid in my collection. And one, hopefully more of you guys can actually win something nice, like we did this year. So if this sounds fun, don't forget to check the description. You're gonna have all the names of these orchids, a link towards a straw poll. And with that said, let's just get to work because we have quite a few orchids to go through this month as well. First orchid we had in bloom this month was a premiere for me as well. It is the Ascofinidia peaches and isn't she adorable? I absolutely love that salmon pinkish color and the orchid herself is absolutely gorgeous. Very compact, lots of flower spikes at once. The flowers are very tiny but beautiful and bonus, it is slightly fragrant. I did not detect anything in the nighttime but early in the morning hours I could detect this really flowery, maybe slightly citrusy fragrance. It's nothing powerful really, but it's something. And even if she is a neo Phoenicia hybrid, I don't feel like it resembles the neo quite at all. Maybe just appearance-wise, but care-wise, not at all. So I just treat it exactly identical as a Vanda, keep her outside, gets the same treatment, and everything is going great. And look at that amount of flower spikes. Really beautiful orchid. I'm looking forward for future blooms. Another vendacious orchid we had in bloom is the Aridas Huleshiana. Both of these orchids are actually not in bloom right now because they were in full bloom towards the beginning of the month and now they're not looking all that great anymore. As a side note, neither of these orchids are very long lasting. Let's just think about Phalaenopsis, right? No, I think you can get a maximum of about a month, maybe a little bit more than a month. But anyway, the Huleshiana, just like the peaches, is absolutely worth having. And the flowers might not be very striking. Yes, there are varieties which are a little bit more colorful, slightly more orange, mine is a little yellow. What to do, that's the variety. The fragrance though, oh my goodness, it's one of the best fragrances ever. It is very, very citrusy, slightly lemony actually, but don't imagine it's sour. It's more of a sweet type of lemon and it's powerful. Whenever I would water my Vanda orchids in the morning, I could detect the fragrance and it was everywhere in the air. I had two flower spikes this year, so a lot better show than last year. But yeah, sadly, the flowers individually don't last all that long. Luckily though, the orchid produces quite a lot of flowers per flower spike. So again, the show can extend to over a month, but it's not Phalaenopsis long. Phalaenopsis are very special creatures when it comes to longevity. But I think the strong point of this orchid is the mouth-watering fragrance. I love it. It's one of my, mm, I think it's kind of second best to the Princess Jackie. That's how much I like it. It's a wonderful fragrance. Next up, oh my goodness. Here she is, the Brassavola Jiminy Cricket. And you might say, holy moly, isn't that a huge flower? Yes, it is. It's huge. It's wonderful. I'm so happy because in case you're new to my channel, I've had this orchid for five years and it didn't bloom. And it's all my fault because I continuously stressed it. So I did make a video talking about it recently. So check it down below in the description. And I'm hoping that you'll learn from my mistakes but in the end, I did not want to give up on it. This is an orchid my mom saw in the store and she pointed it out for me. I would have never seen it. And to find something like this in a normal grocery store, like a hypermarket, no, it's very rare. So it does have a lot of sentimental value and a few ants, it's okay. Let's just ignore them at this point. And for those of you who have more experience with orchids, yes, it does look like a Rincolalia. And this is because it is a hybrid of the Rincolalia digbiana and it smells wonderful in the nighttime. 
The flower, I personally love it. I like green flowers, to be fully honest. I don't like pale yellow green, but green I like. And it really is a huge, huge orchid. The lip is super broad. It's slightly, slightly fringy. Can we see that? It reminds a little bit of the Digbiana. The petals and sepals are greener, while the lip is lighter in color. And it takes all of the boxes of being a nighttime fragrant orchid. It has the same fragrance as the Rincolalias, there are only two Rincolalias, but anyway, it's the same fragrance, very similar to Brassavolas. And if you look at the orchid herself, you can see she does resemble that very iconic shape that the Brassavolas have. And this is because her second parent is the Brassavola nodosa. Can you imagine two queens crossed together? The nodosa and the Rincolalia dipiana, and this is what resulted. A wonderful, wonderful looking orchid with a humongous flower, wonderful nighttime fragrance. And yeah, what can I say? I'm just so incredibly happy. Oh, another thing I wanted to point out. This year is the first year when I have another direction of growth starting. Most of my cattleyas do this when I grow them outside. So she is actually enjoying the outside world as well. Next up, look who we have in bloom once again. It's the... Well, I used to call it Catlea San Gold. It's actually Brasso Catante. It is a complex hybrid. For the sake of easy conversation, I'm just gonna call it a Catlea. In its parentage though, you will find a lot of Lelias, very interesting orchid species, which I will get into. I know somebody suggested to try out the Rupiculus Lelias. I will, I promise I will. I love them too, I love the shape of the flower and the beautiful colors they have, so I will get into them. But you might have noticed that I didn't actually purchase myself any new orchids lately and this is because it's super hot and I'm a little afraid with transport. And also in my area in the summertime they really don't bring much orchids, not even Phalaenopsis. So yeah, I will have to wait for autumn. Back to the little Sun May Gold here, this is an orchid that I received from another YouTuber, Fifi Corina, here on YouTube. I really, really liked her orchid and she sent me a division, which never bloomed before. It bloomed in the winter, I think, but only on one growth. And this year we have two directions of growth, blooming and looking spectacular. I absolutely love the color of this orchid, the beautiful pattern, the spots, everything about it. There is a chance some individuals will be fragrant during nighttime. Hybrids can actually differ a little bit, but I wouldn't be very, very hopeful and I would go for how beautiful the flowers are and the color and all of those nice things, not the fragrance. So here we have her in bloom once again. She's a very fast grower and she's growing absolutely spectacular. Let's remain in the realm of Cattleya. We also had the Cattleya Jungle Eyes, an older orchid in my collection. This year, finally, she bloomed with two flowers. All of these years she only produced one flower, but this year she made two and the pattern is slightly different. She really looks a little bit better than usual in my opinion. And the flowers were even a little bit more long lasting than all of these years. So she's clearly enjoying the treatment, the weather outside. She's doing great. The problem is I missed her flowers. So we do have some footage of a previous video that I made on her. Right now her flowers are spent. I thought she would make it until today and I postponed filming it, but sadly today the flowers really didn't look so great. So that's a mistake on my part, but we do have good footage with it. She is a wonderful Eclandia hybrid, has a wonderful... It's a combination between a Brassavola and something a little bit more flowery. It smells during daytime though, it's not very powerful, but definitely pretty noticeable. But that pattern, again, is really lovely and as I was saying in one of my community posts, I am starting to have quite a few orange orchids in bloom at one time. So I think I might have overdone it with the whole orange color situation, but it's okay. I'm sure the day will come when I will only have purple stuff in bloom and I will crave for orange. Are you bored of Catleas? Yes? No? Well, it's Catlea season, so there will be a few more these months. This is a hybrid. I can never completely remember the name. It's Catlea Bull Lady crossed with Lelia Sincorana. Something of the sort. You're gonna, of course, have the name in the description. I wish this record would get registered and have a proper name because it's a long thing to write on the tag. This is a wonderful, very, very dark 
purple Cattleya. And yes, I'm not a huge fan of dark purple, but this one is different. This one looks amazing. It also has a wonderful contrast with yellow, and I just love this type of contrast. And above everything else, it is so incredibly fragrant. Now bonus, this orchid can be found, at least here in Europe, in flower shops. I saw it so, so many times this year, and I think that you can definitely find it in nurseries as well here in Europe. I'm not entirely sure about the USA. If any of you have seen it anywhere, of course, do let us know in a comment. I do believe this is one of those cattleyas just worth having. It's beautiful, it grows fast, it blooms multiple times a year, and it's fragrant. It's wonderfully fragrant. It's not one of those really weird fragrances. No, it's flowery, citrusy, all of that good stuff. So highly, highly recommended. So there we have it, she's in bloom once again. Typically blooms twice a year for me. And in the winter time, the blooms are more red than this. They're a burgundy color, but in the summertime, they're pretty purple. So it is to some extent a color changer as well. Alrighty, normally I would not present this orchid because it's not fully open. We still have a bud to go and the blooms are not fully, fully open either. This is the Vanda Pachara Delight. We have an issue with this one this year. It's very, very hot outside. It's actually a pretty bad heat wave and this orchid is not responding well. It's getting kind of dehydrated. The orchid herself looks okay, but the flowers tell me she's not receiving enough water. I have dry patches. Do you see this? Dry edges. That's a clear sign of not being okay with the temperature and with the dryness outside. So what I did was I put some more sphagnum moss in her basket and I'm trying to water her specifically multiple times a day. I water my vendas twice a day, but for some it's not enough, particularly when they're in bloom, they need more water. So I'm starting to water it more frequently. She's already lost two flowers, by the way, they just dried up. So for the past few days, she didn't lose any more flowers and I'm hoping that she will open them, but just in case she doesn't, yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna present her this month. So the Vanda Pachara Delight can look much, much better than this. The flowers can fully open and become really, really large. Pacharas are known for their large flowers. I have this orchid for six years already, and this is the first year she's doing this, but it corresponds with the heat wave. I am also considering to keep her in the greenhouse at least until the blooms are over, but there isn't a good enough place in my greenhouse right now. Outside she receives adequate light and the heat wave will go away and if I lose a few flowers, that's okay. I've seen this orchid in bloom so many times and you have some links down below if you wanna see her in her full glory. So a missed flowering, it's not a big deal for me. I know her very well. The orchid herself though looks very, very good. She is liking the treatment, the fertilizer, all of that good stuff we talked about last time. So here she is, the Vanda Pachara Delight, not a fragrant Vanda. She typically has super big blooms. This year, a little angry about the weather, but hey, we're all suffering, darling. It's gonna go away. I'm gonna water you more frequently. Just be healthy and then we can bloom later, you know? Yeah, so that's why I wanted to show you this one as well today because I'm not entirely sure that the flowers will be long lasting this time. Next up, we have a Paphiopetalum. This is a multifloral. It's Paphiopetalum Judge Philip. And look at him, he's so pretty. This year, I decided to try and let the flower spike pendant. Maybe it looked more natural, pretty. No, I hate it. I will next year pin the flower spike. It's just not looking how it's supposed to look like. Anyway, as I was saying, this is a multifloral Paphiopetalum, meaning it produces multiple flowers on a flower spike. It is not a sequential bloomer in the sense that it will not rebloom again from this flower spike over the course of X amount of years, but the buds can actually take their time until they open. So currently on my orchid, I have one flower which is already fading away. Oh, there we go and one bud still not open just yet. Do you see it here? So I decided to feature it today because this orchid will not necessarily ever be in full, full bloom if it continues to do that. But definitely, I really, really enjoy the flowers. They're not fragrant, but they have this wild shape to them, the twisty petals here. Look how pretty it is. It's a gorgeous Paphiopetalum. Now the mother plant is not looking all that gorgeous. It is the last Paphiopetalum that I have in Lekka and I cannot tell you why I left it in Lekka. 
it's not for comparison, no, I think it just got forgotten and then I saw the flower spike and I decided not to mess around with the root system, but look how the leaves look like, no, not okay. So yeah, my paps absolutely enjoy better and organic media. He will get repotted pretty, pretty soon after he's done with his blooming. And yeah, he's just a really, really nice orchid to have. Not fussy at all. I mean, you can see it's still in Lekka. And the multifloral aspect is absolutely wonderful. In a way, it is sequential because, of course, flowers open one after the other. But in the world of orchids, we refer to orchids such as the Cycopsis or what other sequential bloomer do I know? The Aranthus, which we will see today, which can bloom for months and months or years and years in a row from the very same flower spike. Not these guys. Hence why I guess we call them multiflorals. Next up, in bloom once again, Bulbophyllum daisy chain. These are new flowers. And actually he had two more in the back. They're faded away. And this is the latest flower. And I... Oh, no. I think there's another flower spike here. Do you see it? Or maybe it's not. It might just be a grass. This orchid is such a prolific bloomer. Take a look at all of these flower spike remains in the back here. They were all flowers and the flowers, they all have this daisy appearance to them. I love it. It's a wonderful orchid. Let me just show it to you like this. Isn't it pretty? Bonus, this orchid does not smell bad. Bulbophyllums can have a pretty foul smell, but this one doesn't. The bad side, these flowers are really not long lasting. They last for like five days or so, max. And then all of these nice little petals, they just fall away. So yeah, sadly, it creates a lot of flowers. It's beautiful. And overall, it can last for a couple of months or so, but individual flowers just don't last. I love it though. It's my favorite Bulbophyllum. Mind you though, I didn't have many Bulbophyllums. It's the second one that I see in bloom, but hey, it's my favorite so far. So here we have them again, Daisy Chain in bloom. These amazing flowers. Next up, here we have my first Zygopetalum rebloom. And I wish I could say that I love it, but I don't. <sighs> it's a bit of a letdown because I just had expectations. I expected it to be fragrant. It was advertised as being fragrant, but it does not look like the picture and it also does not have a fragrance. Now, it does smell like something, maybe hay with a very, very slight dose of artificial sweetness, but it's really not something that I enjoy. I want to have the zygopetalums that I used to find six years ago that smelled like hyacinths or lilies or things of the sorts, and I just don't have luck. Other than that, you know what? I'm happy because I maintained this guy alive and we have a good root system in the pot here and he's doing good and he bloomed. The problem is the blooms are not very fragrant, moreover, they are opening so slow that the oldest flower is already starting to weather off. So anyway, I didn't actually tell you the ID. This is not a proper zygopetalum. It's a hybrid between barbel hone hybrid crossed with Paradisanthus micranthus. And here he is. I have a funny suspicion that it is mislabeled actually simply because it does not look like what it's supposed to look like. I don't know at this point. I'm starting to get really frustrated with all of this mislabeling, especially with nurseries because unlike eBay, you do tend to pay a little bit more premium for the orchids in the nursery and that's fine because obviously you do have more advantages with the nursery returns, refunds, all of that stuff, which you cannot always find on eBay unless you find a really serious seller. Luckily, I do have sellers, which are very serious. Um, so for me, the whole nursery thing, I wanted to try more nurseries this year. I'm, I don't wanna do that anymore. Not because of the money, not because of the transport or anything of the sorts, because of mislabeling. I can always give away the orchids that I don't really like, but it's just, Ugh, I don't want to be disappointed in any way by an orchid. I like orchids and if I pick an orchid, I choose it because I like it. I don't want to be like, ugh, I don't like you, I'm just gonna give you away. Uh, you know, anyway, so a little disappointing here, but hey, it's my first uh, Zygopetalum rebloom. And you know what? 
maybe in the colder season I would get a better fragrance from this orchid. It's not unheard of for some orchids to smell better according to temperature, right? So I'm still keeping my hopes high for the next bloom. I am more courageous with Psychopetalums, but I so wish I would find a proper fragrant one. Maybe this autumn. Next up, you'll never guess, it's the Oncidopsis Nelly Eiler. Yes, she's still around and yes, she bloomed. And the thing with these orchids is that in the summertime or the warmer months, they just don't bloom as good as in the colder months. And you can see on my flowers the degree of tessellation. This has always happened to me and the very same plant can actually look much, much redder in cooler seasons. So this is the first rebloom of this orchid. She is still kind of recovering, to be fully honest. I see that I need to water it. There are roots here but there aren't a lot. And also, do you see that the new growth is putting out a flower spike as well? Well, it means this growth will probably not mature completely or that it will remain tiny. Again, I've had it happen before. But most importantly, the plant is still okay, it's still around and it has a good root system. So that's what I'm looking for with this very, very fussy orchid. I think it is the fussiest orchid in my collection at this moment. Anyway, many of you already know the Nelly Eiler. I'll share with you down below some videos with better bloomings of this orchid and more info about my previous Nelly Eilers in this environment it's hard for me to keep them alive but it's not impossible and the most important thing is for them to create a root system which this one did the smell of the Nelly Eiler is a sort of love it or hate it I love it to me it smells cit not citrusy lemony it's really beautiful the flowers are red when it's cool outside and it kind of is my favorite orchid because it's so fussy does that make sense hence why my first merch line had the Nelly Eiler design Anyway, it will take a long time for this one to become fully established and just do proper, but I'm willing to wait. So far, so good. And here's another fussy orchid. Well, to be honest, not as fussy as the Nelly Eiler. This is the Multoniopsis, question mark. I purchased it as the Red Tide and I made a video this month about it telling you that the rebloom does not look like a Red Tide. So most probably there are two orchids there but I didn't notice it when I repotted and usually these things are very noticeable. So I'm curious to see what this growth will be, but this side bloomed like this. So let's just call her the no ID Miltoniopsis half. I purchased this orchid earlier this year actually, and this is her first rebloom. It was still getting adjusted to my environment. So the flower spike is crooked, is bent in the middle. But that's okay, it still smells very, very, very nice. It still looks great. And it was a surprise to see because I was expecting some red purple flowers and I got this. So really interesting to see what will happen. She's been in bloom this month as well. Not the greatest of displays, but there are blooms nonetheless. I'm not gonna complain. Next up, here's another cat layout type. You thought it was over? No, it's cat layout season. This is a second rebloom for me. This is the BL or Brassolalia Golden Peacock. I don't know if it's a Brassolalia anymore. It could just be Brassocatlia. I know a lot of Lalias were reclassified, but anyway, who cares? The Golden Peacock was in bloom, I think in December or January, and it had a really great display, but this time it's even better. So again, I tried to leave the flower spike go pendant and see how I like it. I'm not sure about it. These types of very long, flower spikes. I think they look better straight. So the next one, which hopefully will be from this growth, I will try to stake. I usually prefer pendant flower spikes when there are multiple flowers, let's say on the flower spike. But anyway, the flowers are just as lovely, I think slightly larger than they used to be in the winter. This is not known to be a fragrant orchid, but very, very early in the morning, I detect a slight Brassavola scent to it, but it's very, very mild. So if you want to purchase this one, don't do it because it's fragrant. You'll probably not detect much, but do purchase it for the wonderful colors, the vigorousness of this hybrid. It is one of my most vigorous orchids in my entire collection. Very, very similar to the Sun May Gold actually. And of course, the lovely color and lovely display. I love Lelia shaped flowers, even though they might have been reclassified. As I was saying, I don't care about reclassification actually. But look at that star shape. I love it. So yeah, I think the next on the list for me will be some Lelias. What do you guys think? 
Next up, an orchid species premiere. This is the Aranthus grandiflora and sadly I did a boo-boo. I deleted by mistake the footage with the flowers and when I realized it, I just took a few photos really fast. But I cannot really showcase this orchid properly right now. Maybe I can make a dedicated video for it care-wise because it is actually a really, really easy to care for orchid. But when it comes to the flowers, I'm a little disappointed once again. I purchased this orchid in the hopes that it will smell beautiful. This is how it's advertised to be fragrant. Um, there are people saying it smells like cookie dough and buttery and things of the sorts. Well, mine smells like moldy bread. I'm not even joking. Yes, it smells in the nighttime, but the fragrance is not okay. Um, so maybe it's something to do with the fact that it's the very first time this orchid blooms, it's the first spike, it's a very young orchid, maybe it's a different variety, I don't know. I wish I could detect that beautiful, sweet smelling scent. All I detect, and I'm not joking, is soggy, kind of moldy, sour bread. Actually not moldy, sour bread. Not nice. <laughs> I was so disappointed and I smelled it every single night. Um, the good thing is that this orchid is a sequential bloomer. You can see I have another bud forming here and the buds look very, very cute. The flowers themselves look very cute. Um, the flowers are not supposed to last more than a few days. Mine lasted a week and a half or something like that in good condition and smelling that way. So I'm willing to wait a little bit more. If not, you know, maybe this is an individual which simply doesn't smell that great and maybe I will think of repurchasing one that I would know for sure smells great. I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, sadly, the fragrance was not up to par to what I was expecting. So if you want to purchase this orchid for the fragrance, beware. There might be some of you who detect the smell differently or there might be varieties who simply don't smell nice and good. So let me know down in the comment section how many of you detected a nice smell, how many of you detected a very not so nice smell. Maybe it's something with me, who knows, which would be sad, very possible but sad. The orchid herself is really pretty and the flowers are wild looking. She's a massive root producer, very easy to care for, so that's why it's a little bit of a shame that it smells bad out of my entire collection. I think this is the worst smelling orchid that I have. If it was a Bulbophyllum, I would get it, but it's not. So yeah, I don't know what to say about it. I'll let you guys know if the fragrance changes in any way due to season, due to the orchid maturing. I, I'm disappointed at this point. From something that smells bad to something that smells very, very good. This is Dendrobium perishi. The smell of this orchid, people describe it as raspberry. I can see that. I think it's a little bit more complex than that. And depending on one's memories, it can actually smell like other things. For example, I'm reminded of Christmas because it has some orange tints to it. Yes, I agree, raspberry, but also some other things. Anyway, beautiful fragrance. This orchid though is supposed to bloom in the springtime and for me it bloomed in the middle of summer. It's a little off season. I'm hoping to properly season it this year and see if it will bloom in the correct season, but it was a joy. I absolutely loved it. I had multiple canes blooming this year and multiple directions of growth actually, so I'm happy with its evolution, happy with the fragrance. It's not a mild fragrance either. I was watering my outside orchids and every time that fragrance was just everywhere. So I fully recommend this plant. However, I do know one single person who finds the fragrance of the Anosmum and Parishi very repulsive. So I guess this can be said with any plant. There will be people who will hate the fragrance, but I'm trying to make a statistics. Most people like the fragrance. And the last orchid of the day, finally, we reached the end. It's a mini Phalaenopsis. It's a no ID. It's one of the minis that I purchased, I think at the beginning of this year or the end of last year. I just got myself a lot of mini fells because I really, really like them. I actually like fells. What I don't like about them, the big ones, is the fact that they take a lot of space, a lot of resources, and they look like green lettuces in the summertime. The minis, on the other hand, they're tiny, compact, and I prefer the clustered tiny flowers to the big spindly flowers, if that makes sense. Although I cannot say no to a cascade, never mind that. So this is a no ID. It looks like it could be an equestrious hybrid. It's not fragrant, nothing that I can detect, but it's really pretty. It's a pink, simple, 
or lavender colored Phalaenopsis, which just brightens my day and that's about it. But sometimes simple is good because you cannot get disappointed in this. Look how pretty it is. Side note, now that I can actually put plants in my house, I'm thinking to make some really nice arrangements with some mini fowls, African violets maybe in the house. Are you guys interested in some African violets videos? Let me know because I'm exploring the opportunities that I have in my living room, which is very bright, but I could never actually put plants in there, you know, just to be safe. But now I can, so yeah following my mom's footsteps. If you didn't know, my mom is the African Violet Guru. I'll share with you down below a very old video with my mom's collection. It's something else. She has those African Violets for 20 years or so, or more. I digress, let's end the video. So that is about it for today. You might notice we do have some missing orchids, such as the Dendrobium Cuthbertsoni, which is still in bloom. Well, some of the flowers are starting to fade finally after more than half a year, but the thing is there are no new flowers on the orchid, so we don't feature it. Also, there are a few you might have seen this month, but they still have buds, so I'm just gonna film them next month when they are in full glory, just to make the contest as fair as possible for every orchid. As I was suspecting, these videos are getting longer and longer, which I personally don't mind. Whenever Laura is making a 40-50 minute tour of her garden and talking about it, I am so into that. It's like a movie for me, I watch it, I get a snack, I get a beverage and I'm enjoying myself. So I'm hoping these videos become something like that every month for you guys, that voice crack. Because I fear they will just keep getting longer and longer. Anyway, with that said, thank you again for watching. You know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, and once a month a tour of the orchid blooms. We need to delight ourselves in those as well. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. With that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!